Today we have a 2002 Toyota 4Runner and the customer wants to know if this car is road worthy to go on a summer trip. So we have lots of people that come in for summer trip inspections. People go to Big Sur, everywhere else. Uh, th this one's going to Big Sur and they want a safety inspection. So we're gonna check the brakes, we're gonna check the shocks and we're gonna look at the bottom. Um, the first thing that we kind of notice here is that there are some oil leaks. The car's got a pretty good amount of oil leaks. Um, the oil is kind of traveling back here as the car, as the person is driving the car, the oil's kind of dripping off and then atomizing onto the each frame section of the car. As we move back to the middle of the car here, there's still oil. This is the gas tank right here. So there's oil all over the bottom of the gas tank. And then it kind of just barely dribbles and makes its way back to the axle. Whenever you're looking for oil leaks, uh, just real quick, you just want to go up as high as you can until where you see oil coming out of. On this one, I could t I know right now the valve covers are leaking, which is up at the very, very top of the engine. So at the least, it needs some valve cover gaskets. What you want to do is make sure that the brake pad lining is good. And then also the tie rods are not loose. Uh, same thing with the ball joints. We want to inspect the shocks and make sure they're not leaking. Uh, the shocks are not leaking, but they do look old. Uh, but they're not leaking um, over on this side as well so and then this is just the right front the left front has all the same stuff it has tie rods it has ball joints and shocks uh, the back of this vehicle is a solid axle rear end um, so the back has shocks and brakes make sure that nothing else is leaking back here so the rear differential is not leaking that's good the exhaust system's in good shape uh, there's no big holes anywhere or anything so that's gonna be good for a road trip. Uh, so for right now, all we see on this car is the oil leak that's happening from the top coming down. So now let's go up to the top and look at it. On the top here, we wanna just look at a couple fluids uh, that would be very important while you're on a road trip. The first one being the coolant level. Uh, so we're gonna remove the radiator cap, make sure that there is coolant down inside there. Uh, I, and I do not see any coolant there, so we're gonna go ahead and add some coolant in there. Uh, this Toyota 3.4 liter, uh, this is like Toyota's, one of Toyota's best engines. Um, it's a cast iron V6 with aluminum heads, dual overhead cam, 24 valve. It's a really good solid engine. There is a timing belt. This is the first time I've seen this car. Uh, the timing belt sticker that somebody did, it looks like the timing belt was done at 142,000 miles. It's got 180 some odd thousand miles now. The timing belts are due every 90. So you won't need to do it till about what looks like about 142 plus 90,000 from there. Uh, we will also just double check that the air filter is good. Um, the air filter looks, it looks a little dirty. That's all right. I mean, that's just kind of, you know, it, sh it should look like that color. So it's, it's dirty, that's the, that's the catching side. So it could use an air filter before it goes to Big Sur. Um, but we're definitely gonna check the front belts. So the front belts down here, they have a little bit of cracking there, um, but not too bad. Uh, those can make it without a problem. Um, we're definitely gonna be checking the engine oil level. So there's always, you know, that question, how do you check engine oil level? So on every single car, we'll just go over that real quick. On every single car that has a dipstick, there's a high mark right here and a low mark right there. So this low to high mark represents one quart of oil. So if you are on the low mark, you're gonna add one quart of engine oil to this car and you're gonna bring it to the high mark. So it, as long if you're driving and you're in the middle of Big Sur, as long as you're at, at least at the low mark, you're gonna be just fine. On this car, we will start by adding one quart. We will not add more than one quart at a time. And then we will continue to recheck it until it gets up to the top. The battery right here, I always observe battery dates because battery dates uh, 12 of 16. Um, so the battery is about three years old or so, two and a half years old. The battery is probably fine, but we're just gonna load test it just to be on the safe side. If the battery's five years old. It's gonna fail soon, even if it's testing good. Um, here's the brake fluid level. We're just about at that max line right there. So there's a max and a min line right there. We're just at that max line. 
So that's good. So those are all the vital fluids. The one fluid that should be checked with the, is the windshield washer fluid. Uh, so that's where the windshield washer fluid is going to go. The power steering fluid is right here. We can also check that as well. So this has a dipstick. The dipstick um, on this one is much shorter. The canister is much smaller. There's a cold mark and there's a hot mark. So if the fluid is cold or hot, so if, if the engine is cold or hot, that's how you're gonna tell. If the engine's hot, you're gonna wanna put it in, in the hot line. This does not represent one quart like I was talking about with the engine. This represents like a couple ounces of oil. So it's not, it does not hold anywhere near as much. So if we just go ahead and pull this out, it is within the cold line. It might be a little tiny bit over full, but as long as it's not leaking out of the top, that's gonna to be just fine. We've checked the brakes. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, hey Noah, go ahead and turn the lights on for me. Yeah, we're gonna do, we're gonna check all the lights on this car, reverse lights, brake lights, turn signals, uh, running lights, headlights, and license plate lights. There's an average of like 20 or 30 lights per car on every car with all those lights that I just mentioned. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure that all those lights are good. What I'm gonna tell the customer about, can they drive from Encinitas to Big Sur? Maybe, maybe not. It's kind of a big oil leak. Um, I would advise them to fix it before they left, definitely. Um, and that's it. We're gonna top off all these fluids that are low. So the coolant and the engine oil, we're definitely gonna top off before they leave. Let's make sure that we do not forget to check the windshield wipers. So the windshield wipers, we're gonna check, we're gonna run our fingers along, make sure they're not cracked or broken anywhere on the driver side and the passenger side. So whenever we are uh, inspecting uh, the car for safety inspection, we're gonna open the driver's door and then on this pillar somewhere, or sometimes it's on the door, on this car it's on the pillar. This car wants 32 PSI of air in the front and 32 PSI of air in the back. So we are gonna make sure that this car has 32 PSI of air all the way around. We're also gonna verify that there is air in the spare. Tire pressures, fluid levels, windshield wipers, light bulbs, make sure that nothing's leaking on the bottom, which this there is. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any coolant leaks. Um, so yeah, this, is, this car's a, in good shape and it's gonna continue to go on at 180,000 miles. It's got long life in it. These are the best engines that Toyota ever made.